I've already done one tutorial about how to do time-lapse photos from a GoPro Hero 3 and turn them into a video. Uh, one of the things I didn't cover in that previous tutorial was how awesome it is to have all these extra pixels to create, you know, actually some panning or zooming, widening type shots. Uh, right now, 1080p video is sort of the standard. That's what you see on YouTube. That's what you go by 1080p televisions. 4K is coming, which is uh, like instead of 1920, it's double that wide. Instead of 1080, it's uh, what, 2160 tall. So it's twice the height too. But when you're working with time-lapse photos, you've actually still got even more pixels than that to deal with. So you can do some things by nesting sequences inside of sequences that allow you to do some really great uh, zooming in and out type things and i'm going to show you how to do that with a time lapse uh, video it's kind of one of the more, more powerful reasons i think to shoot photos rather than just video so what i've done i have shot uh, out of my garden a series of uh, photos here and i've got them I already imported them in these photos are from a gopro hero 3 or 12 megapixel i shot them every one every 10 seconds so in each minute there's one uh, there's six photos in each minute, so uh, one every 10 seconds. And these uh, photos, if you look at them up here on the top, it says that they're 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. So they're 4-3 in aspect rather than 16-9, uh, which is what general 1080p video is. And so there's a lot more pixels. Instead of 1920 why we got 4,000 pixels this way. Instead of 1080 this way, we got 3,000. So we've got a lot of pixels. What I want to do, I want to create a sequence that I can make blow up and down uh, so I don't have to try to do it with photos, right? I'll explain it a little more clearly what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to close this uh, folder of photos up and I'm going to right click inside uh, the project window here and I'm going to say new sequence. And what am I going to do? Instead of getting a 1080p sequence that's 30 frames per second, which is what YouTube likes, I'm going to go down here to the red RD3 and I'm going to pull open uh, one. Now, I'll tell you why am I doing, why am I going to red? You can actually alter these presets with the red presets. It will not let you alter a preset, the, uh, fr the frame size in the AVC HD presets in Premiere. Don't know why it won't let you do that. I guess maybe because it knows it, it, that it won't work with that AVC HD 1080p setting. So I'm going to go into like the 5K setting here on uh, on uh, red, and I'm going to go down to a 5K uh, 2997. Here's 241, you see. That'll work. And I'm actually not going to use that exact preset. I'm going to go up here under settings. See settings, little tab here that's, that's not selected. Well, I'm going to select that, and it will let me put in here a custom size. So I'm going to go into frame size. I'm going to go 4,000. I'm going to go horizontal or vertical 3000. So I have just created a frame size that is uh, acceptable and is exact frame size of our photos. So you see down here under preview, it's showing 1920 by 1037. That's okay. I don't really care. That's just the preview of this. So I'm going to call this sequence, I'm going to call this full size, F U L L S I Z E. So we'll say OK, and now I've got a sequence. If I click on this sequence here, I can see it is 4,000 by 3,000. Here is the sequence down here. So I'm going to go into the, my photos here. I'm going to uh, double click that. And now I'm going to click inside the box here and do a Control A to select all of them, every single one of them. I'm going to pull them down here onto the timeline. So I'm pulling them onto V1. So now it's, it's a short piece of video I've got. Um, I've actually got 30 frames per second, and by zooming here, you can see these are photos. But this is only about, what, uh, I don't know, 15 seconds or so of video, 16 seconds of video. But I'm going to do my time lapse here, and you can see what I've got. I've got this big 4-3 aspect. I've got lots of sky up here. This is my garden. I'm going to be watching the sun and the clouds cross over, uh, and you know, it's just the whole time lapse type thing you see so very often. But I've got a lot more pixels than I can use in a 1080 piece of video, and I want to go to YouTube with a 1080 piece of video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do Control S to save right off the bat. Now over here again in the project window, I'm going to right click again, I'm going to say new item, I'm going to put a sequence, and this time I am going to choose one of those AVC HD presets here, I'm going to go 1080p, 
and I'm going to get the 1080p 30. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to first let me title this. Let's call this one, uh, let's just call it 1080p version. So now what I've got, I've got a sequence that's 1080p. So I'm going to pull this full-sized one into the 1080p, right? Okay, it's going to ask me, do I want to keep the existing settings or change sequence settings? If I wanted to change the sequence settings, it would just turn it into another uh, 4,000 by 3,000 pixel. But I don't want that. I want to keep the 1080p. So I'm going to say keep existing settings. And look what I've got now. See how this is framed? This is framed like regular old 1080p. If I go back to this one, we've got the 4.3 which is with all these extra pixels. This is 4,000 pixels wide, 3,000 pixels tall. This one is 1920 wide and 1080 tall. So what I want to be able to do, I want to be able to make this sequence, which is running in the background with all these extra pixels, I want to make it be able to maybe zoom out, right? So right now it's at 100%, but I'm not seeing 100% of the pixels. We know there's pixels way out here, all the way out here. So I thought what I would do for this tutorial is we're going to zoom in on, this is the sequence, the 1080p version, and I'm going to pull to about 12, I don't know, about 11 seconds into it. And I'm going to hit the C key on my, uh, my keyboard, and that gives me my little razor tool, my cut tool, I call it. Now I'm going to hit V again, that's that to get back to just the pointer key. I'm going to click, well, first of all, I'm going to go back to the very beginning of this piece of video. This is the one I want to make zoom. So I'm going to go into a motion up here in the effects controls, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit the animation keys here for these. I'm going to, in other words, I'm going to be adding a keyframe. I'm going to put click on this one and this one, position and scale. So I click the little stopwatch for position and scale. So now I'm getting ready to set a starting size for this, and let's say I'm just going to guess maybe 50%. Now, now, now you know what? I'm I'm sorry, I'm wrong on this. Let's leave this at 100%. Let's go back to 100, and let's make it zoom out to about 50%, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, I, I can drag this across to get to this, but I'm going to give you a little tip here. If you've not gone in, in your in your preview window, your program window here, and added this tool right here, that's the go to next edit point. That's a good thing to add. The way you add these, I've added a bunch of little tools here that are handy for me. If you haven't got this one here underneath, and just go to the little plus over here on, at this point, and you can add that, go to the next, and just drag it down here onto your little line. It's a cool tool to have here in your little tools. So I'm going to go to uh, that, and it's going to take me to the exact place where I put that cut. Now um, I'm going to go back one frame, and so uh, so I, 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 I can see what I'm affecting here. You have to do that, or otherwise you're seeing the next frame. So right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this at this point down to 50%. So now I can see pretty much my whole screen there. Um, I don't know, do I want to see more sky at this point? Yeah, maybe I do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, on my position here, where the little 540 is, I'm going to take it maybe down a little bit. I'd like to be able to maybe see more of that sky reveal itself at this point. So what's going to be happening now, I've set up a uh, uh, where I start in tight and I widen out, and I've still got 100% pixels. I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, blowing up any pixels or anything. I'm just making use, good use of the pixels that are there. So, uh, when I get to this point, it's going to change back, right? So what I want is I want where this one ends to be the same as this one, right? So I don't want this one to be jumping back to a big, a big piece of video again. On the last frame on this one, I want this, this piece of video to match up to this one that I want to jump up to something big. So I see here I've got 668 and 50. So I'm going to click on this piece of video. I'm going to do 668 and 50. Now you'll notice I didn't do anything with the keyframes on this because I want this just to stop. I want this to, to zoom out to this point and then stop. And then I actually walk into the frame here in just a second. And I did a little bit of a, just kind of silliness. Uh, uh, I kind of walk out and pick some peppers. And I tried to walk really slow. I tried to make one step every... Uh, every uh, 10 seconds so that it looks sort of like I'm kind of just walking through there. So there we go. I've, I've nested a uh, sequence inside a sequence to make it a zoom. I could also make it pan if I wanted to make it pan and I actually have made it pan since we're, we're showing a little bit more sky. I've pulled it down so we got more sky. So I'm going to render this out and let's take a look at what we've got. And uh, so that's how I would do it if I wanted to make use of extra pixels for a zooming in or out kind of situation. And let's take a look at how this is going to turn out. 
Okay, so I'm back after the render is finished. I've actually gone ahead and brought in my time lapse here that I've done. Uh, I did render it out at 1080p uh, AVC HD, 30 frames per second, and I, I put it out there at about 30 megs per second, so I want it to be fairly high quality. So here it is, I've got it here, I'm gonna hit the tilde key, and then I'll play the video, and it'll show uh, how our motion is going, and uh, it's 100% it's true pixels, nothing's blown up, and um, then it'll end up with my little silliness here at the end, of me walking, uh, taking one step, uh, every 10 seconds to try to make it make me stay on the screen a little bit. So here we go. One, two, three. So there we go. We see the clouds moving. We see our time lap lapse effect, which is really cool. The sun, the shadows growing and everything. And I'll stop right here. Somewhere along in there is where we chose it. And in here I'll walk in and do my little pick a pepper and climb up on a thing and make a uh, funny little face with the pepper there. A mustache. And so, folks, that's the end. I hit the tilde key and get out of that. That's the way I do a time lapse. Uh, and, and, you know, the thing I can do, I can take one of these GoPro cameras and go out into a place where there's a big, wide open space. Um, they'll shoot a long time, a lot a more time. One thing that's kind of cool about it, when we do these time lapses, you get more out of the battery. Uh, GoPro battery, the third party ones, and even the GoPro will last maybe an hour and 10, 15 minutes, something like that. But if you're doing just one shot every 10 seconds, you can probably get two, two and a half hours out of the battery. So you can do a pretty long time lapse with, with, uh, with the photos. And you can get, if you don't mind, jumping through these hoops a little bit to make these long time lapses. Uh, I did this in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. I believe that the uh, GoPro software allows you to do time lapse videos. I just like to be able to do additional color grading and sizing and uh, blow ups and pans and everything. So that's why I've brought my project into Premiere Pro CC. So I hope this has helped. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and if I've not covered anything well, just ask those questions and I'll annotate or put the, uh, re my responses back in uh, notes on the video. So thanks folks, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like to uh, see my little video tips. Thanks, happy video shooting out there in the world.